Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Crusader Kings 3, a new game out by Paradox Interactive, the sequel to Crusader Kings 2, and this is the 867 start that we're playing in. We're, mo we're on the year 923. We are running the game as the Duchy of Georgia. You actually start off as just a you just start off controlling a single county to start the game, but we've expanded that to take f uh, what five more counties: the counties of Heredia, the county of Tbilisi, uh, Clarjeti, and Gira. In our last stream, we took Gira and Clarjeti, and so we're two counties away from being able to declare the Kingdom of Georgia. That's unlikely to occur immediately, however, as Hyastan might be something we can pick off as it's sort of uh, part of the principality of Hyastan down there to the south. But the Caucasus occupies some of our other de jure provinces, and the, can the Khanate of the Caucasus is very powerful. Uh, meanwhile, the Byzantine Empire, which is even more powerful, has advanced to the north and to the west uh, and is threatening us from multiple directions with an army four times the size of the army of the Caucasus. They haven't directly threatened us with war yet, but if we look at the Byzantine Emperor, he does not think terribly uh, highly of us. Uh, he is uh, a negative 27 opinion of us, so that's a little bit scary. We do have some alliances, but not nothing able to stand up to the Byzantine Emperor. In fact, some of the alliances are with folks who are vassals of the Byzantine Empire, Emperor. Um, I think, actually, they all are vassals of the Byzantine Emperor. Um, if we were to fight the Caucasus, though, they would give us a better chance uh, against, uh, against them. So maybe that's what we'll do in this in this episode. Uh, we are Prince Ashot of Georgia. He is 47 years old. He's been ruling for 31 years. He's been ruling since the age of 16, and he's expanded the duchy by two provinces. We have had to divvy out some of the titles in our provinces, uh, one of them being the County of Clarjeti, uh, which we divvied out to Count Tiberos, who is actually one of our sons, uh, because we were at our dominion limit, uh, and we also divvied out the barony of uh, Dedoplasharkura, I'm not how you sure you pronounce that, uh, to our eldest son, Baron Bagarat. He was not a very promising ruler. He's still not very promising in his traits, uh, and so we actually ended up de-inheriting him from the throne. So he was supposed to be our heir, uh, and we, we dethroned him. Uh, we also, uh, de we, well, he was our second oldest son, I guess. The first oldest son, which was uh, uh, another similarly unimpressive youth, David uh, Bagratoni, we caught murdering someone in a, uh, in a hunt. We, we caught him murdering him. No one else was around. And so we murdered our son uh, in punishment for his murdering of someone else. So we eliminated our first uh, son by that. We disinherited our second son. And so our third son, Levan Bagratoni, is actually in line to be the heir to the throne. He's not an amazing figure, but he does have uh, 12 martial skills, 10 learning skills. He's not disastrously bad. Um, he's also a twin, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, we've had some, we've had a, a bit of a, a problem of riches, if you will, in order to determine what to do with our family, because while we murdered one son and disinherited another, we actually have another four sons, uh, to pick amongst. So our, our, uh, our king here, our prince here, uh, has seven offspring. Uh, his wife, uh, Princess Philippa of Georgia, has been very prolific. Uh, she's probably past her childbearing years. I suppose she could have one more. She's 42. Uh, but in any event, there are three more sons uh, who are still in line to be able to inherit. Actually, one, two, three, four, four sons in theory could be in line to inherit. One has been disinherited. We can disinherit the other ones if we want to establish a a clean succession, uh, as we are the head of our culture house that does give us that option, uh, or it did give us that option. We're actually, I don't know if we're, we are still the head of our house, aren't we? We're the head of the Bag Bagratoni uh, dynasty. So we do have the option of um, determining what to do here. I do think it's kind of interesting that the, the line had come down to just two male heirs, uh, Prince David of Georgia, uh, had uh, Prince Ashot of Georgia, and then Suklo Bagrotoni, uh, who was uh, the sister of myself, uh, are the only... Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, so the dynasty is just down to our family. So it had been wider. There were three sons at one point. 
uh, a few years back. And then when our ruler was, uh, where is it here? Does it count Bagrat? In, in any event, we the 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 rain has dramatically shrunk here. It was Count Bagrat over here, and you can see sort of a breakout of of our current house just under ourselves. But the rest of the family's, I think, pretty much gone. Uh, Sukulo, who is our sister, uh, has some children uh, who are ruling different areas, our nephews and whatnot. Uh, but we're but she's also still within our house. So the the Bagratoni family has has been whittled down to just uh, our direct dynasty um, and this generation is exploding in size so we've we've had some success there perhaps creating our own sub house was unnecessary in any event we have a thousand renown right now we've already un unlocked uh, the skills or the education tree to give us a plus 10 courtier and guest opinion and we're having better guests better skills better clerical approval we have a thousand more renown that we could use uh to either work on better uh better bloodlines to work on better espionage uh to uh, allow I, i'm not quite sure what this would this is just better laws that improves popular opinion uh, we could get better prowess and military and knight effectiveness we could go with kin which gives us better for fertility but this generation we've already got that uh, pretty much down pat um so i think what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to go ahead and wait and save up a little bit more renown and see if we can't maybe unlock the second tier of uh, of education or sorry glory i think we've actually done one of each of these so we've done one of glory, one of er 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 erudation, or however you pronounce that. Uh, but I'd like to be able to maybe look at the, the second tier here in our, in our dynasty. Um, so anyway, that's the situation right now. Um, our court is sort of a mixed bag, or our councils are sort of a mixed bag. We've got a steward who's pretty good at 15. We've got a, ma a decent bishop at 14 learning, a decent marshal at 14, an amazing spy master at 20. Uh, we had him married off to Princess Miriam of Hyastan, uh, and the hope is that maybe they will, uh, they will end up uh, having a child and staying in our court and something that we can uh, pass on. We also have Mayor Endezela, uh, who is not apparently has no children, uh, and so I'm wondering if that means maybe her lands could end up being uh, brought into our reign, perhaps, or our rule, perhaps. Um, but that's the situation here. We don't have a huge court. I've been trying to marry folks off so that we can, you know, slowly grow our court. Uh, but for the moment, anyway, we don't have a huge court. We could actually put our son in charge of the finances here. One of our sons, Count Tiber. Tiberos is actually a level 16 steward, whereas uh, our current steward, Thoros, is not. Thoros is also not uh, a, a vassal of any kind, and so we don't need to appease him by maintaining him in, in his position. We could also move him to the marshal's position, where he's a level 15, and we could replace Mayor Okapor, uh, who is also not a strong vassal, so again, we could replace him, and I think that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to go ahead and swap Thoros um, with uh, with Mayor Okapur. Uh, where is he? Okay, so we'll swap them, and then we'll go ahead and we'll fire this guy and put our son in charge. He already had a plus 23 opinion of us, so it shouldn't shouldn't hurt us too much. Meanwhile, Tiberios is, uh, again, our third son, I think it is, and he's uh, our fourth son, and he's he's second in line for the throne. But he's a, he's a good steward there, so that improves our financial situation. It also gets rid of any potential negative effects uh, that you can gain from your, from your steward because he's a high enough rank that he won't get negative side effects here. Um, and uh, the shy guy is still ruling uh, Baldwin. Uh, meanwhile, is there a better option at, at uh, Diplomacy? In theory, one of our knights is slightly better, but this mayor is actually a powerful... Uh, well, she's not a powerful vassal, but she's she's a vassal in any event. Um, yeah. Let's actually have her focus on patronage now that we've got a better steward. I'm, I'm hoping... It means we won't be at our, our dominion limit. And if she focuses on learning, maybe that will get us uh, better culture unlock here. So, or not culture, better um, 
actually it is culture, better culture unlock, because we've advanced into the early medieval period and we're working on hereditary rule, but it's going to take about 25 years for hereditary rule to unlock, and Prince Ashot is already 47, so unless he lives into his early 70s, it's unlikely that we will unlock hereditary succession rules. Uh, hereditary succession rules are great because they allow you to leave everything to one heir, and potentially anyway, leave everything to one heir, the eldest son. Uh, right now, we have a confederate partition, which would actually break up our holdings evenly amongst our children. We could disinherit them and kind of game the system, uh, but until I have an indication that our ruler is in poor health, I don't think I want to do that yet. Um, so it looks like our, our current ruler's health is still fine. So obviously people can die suddenly, but that's the situation right now. Meanwhile, we have 155 gold, and I am interested in, in pouring some of that gold into Tel Aviv. Uh, I would actually like to improve the castle's fortifications, but it currently still has uh, a long way to go to being able to be the, the second tier. We also haven't invested the uh, battlements thing yet, so we could instead maybe build a building. Maybe build a barracks, which would give us a bunch more levies. Uh, we could also look at building hill forts, which would give us a plus two fort level as well as 250 more soldiers in the garrison and a plus two defender advantage. Uh, although realistically against any of the armies of our neighbors who are all pretty large, I don't think having a level two fort's really going to do a whole lot to save us. Um, but that's the situation right now, so we're going to go ahead and unpause and we'll go ahead and get things back underway. She was my friend Baldwin, although I did... Uh, yeah, okay, we're back to above the dominion limit. So I'll have to go back here and change my, my wife's job back to managing the Dominion to get us back under the Dominion limit. What is that? Does that change the culture, the speed? It was 25 years. Now it's back to 32 years. So, uh, Meanwhile, my wife is pregnant with her eighth child at the age of 42. So uh, again, she's very prolific. I can change Count Tiberos' contract because we have a hook on him. Uh, I looked at doing that. That wasn't really something I'm interested in doing right now. We have two powerful uh, vassals who demand council positions. They both kind of suck. Mayor Andronic isn't terrible. He's a level 16 Intriguer. That's actually fairly good, but I'm not going to replace my level 20 Intriguer. I'll let him stay mad at me. My level 20 Intriguer hopefully would prevent me from uh, from being killed in any sort of plot against me. Okay. Well-ordered court, so that every courtier gets a plus 10 opinion of us. That's because of our, our wife, so good job there. We can no negotiate an alliance with Baron Bergrat, who is our son. He has 217 soldiers. I don't see any reason not to do that. So we'll do that. I can declare wars on three different people. I don't want to declare it on the Byzantine Empire. The Shadid uh, Satrophy is actually pretty damn strong as well, and so are the... Uh, the Khanates in the Caucasus, so none of these countries are places I want to declare war yet. I'm not going to ask the head of the faith for gold. I don't I don't need that at the moment. And um, there's no reason to give in to powerful councils. Meanwhile, increase opinion. Mayor Androk, we could do a plot to increase the opinion of one of our vassals who doesn't like us very much, but the problem is our, our current trait, we're, we're a shy ruler, and that would increase our stress by 35, which would bump us up to stress level 2, which I would rather not do. Oh, crap. I already get 10 more stress because uh, because of the alliance negotiation. You know, one thing we should probably consider is maybe going on a hunt again or something to lower our stress. I think uh, a feast would probably increase my stress because I'm shy. Or at least I won't lose stress. We could do a pilgrimage. We're already... We have very good renown. We have a very good piety level. 2,136 piety. I don't actually know what to use piety uh, for in this in this game. Murders at court. Murdered successor. I stare down at the lifeless body of Count... T oh, no. My son. He was in line for the throne. Fuck! Wasn't he? No, he wasn't. He's... It's Levin who was in line for the throne. But he was still one of my more competent sons. I think he was my steward. I moved him into the steward role. Who's murdering my children? 
and feel slightly dizzy. Surely it is my blood that is coating the floor beneath him, for none of it is reaching my brain. I crouch beside him, cupping a cold cheek in my hand. His eyes are wide open, but in surprise rather than horror. Did someone you know do this to you? I will pray for the victim. Make sure everyone is accounted for at all times. Double the guard. Twenty, uh, a twenty opinion penalty is pretty, pretty hefty. I'll go with the guards. God. So I just assigned him to be the steward. Instead, he's murdered. So we're right back to the exact council positions we were in before. And we had a daughter. So our wife's eighth child. Finally, I've uncovered the truth. The cold-blooded knave behind my son Tiberius's early demise was none other than my son and heir left. What? Why would he have murdered him? Why? You two should have been friends. You're the heir. Why would you murder him? Oh, he thought he would get away with this heinous crime, but mark my words, Levin will pay dearly for the, his sins. I don't want to execute him, Stein. I mean, uh, I'm running out of children. Sort of. Not really. Um, can I re-inherit him? Can I make... I can't make him my, uh... My heir, can I? I've already disinherited him. So, Tiberius is dead. Levin is a murderer. The next in line would be David Bagrat. Who doesn't look to be anything special. He's also only eight. Alright, murders at court caught red-handed. My prince, Duskia, and Levin have both gone missing. I wave the guard off and find some alar the same alarm in Davriki's eyes as I feel my own le my own Levin might be. As we finally track unland unlanded down, he is advancing on Duskia, knife in hand. Is he gonna murder someone else now? This is his wife. He's gonna murder his wife. Oh my God. You will be punished for your crimes. Imprison my son and heir. The murder secret is exposed by you. An eye for an eye. A life for a life. I kill my son. All close family members and spouse of Levin Bercatoni lose 50 opinion of me. Okay. Go free, Levin. I can let him go or I can imprison him and let everybody know that he's a, a kinslayer. Oh boy, what do I do here? Hey, Burnt Jesus, thanks for the bits. Yes, I'm playing Iron Man. So there's no no going back in the saves. Um, Shit. I mean, he's not amazing, but he's the best son that I have. 8, 12, 6, 9, 10. Next in line is... I mean, he's only 8, so who knows how uh, how the next son will, uh, will rise up. I guess I'll punish him. I'm going to put him in prison. I can always let him go. So if I go to court, we can see my son is in prison here. I can torture my son. I can torture my own son. <laughs> uh, 
I would gain stress, though. One would think I might gain stress for my son being, uh... Being a murderer of another one of my sons. Then again, I did murder one of my own sons. Although it was in... Res so, my family is just a bunch of murderers. That's, that's, the, that's the rub here. My first son murdered a commoner, so I killed him in retribution. My second son, I disinherited. My third son murdered my fourth son and is now imprisoned. Ugh. New bishop. The Grim Reapers of Georgia, damn right. She's possessed. I don't think I want to marry a possessed person off. The trade is congenial, so... Sounds like a college football team. Is she smart? She's possessed. Is she smart? No. Uh, all right. Um, who's this? My granddaughter took the Duchy of Clarget. Yeah, I don't want to. All right. How many soldiers does she have? 181? We'll get an alliance with uh, with these folks. So it'll give us two alliances with her own internal relatives. Four alliances total, I think. Fourteen hundred, seventeen hundred, so thirty one hundred soldiers. Plus another 500 or so between those two. So about 3,600 soldiers. Okay. Meanwhile, we're working on development within Tbilisi. We're about to get to level 14 development. So we're really turning this region into something impressive. Meanwhile, our income is decent. Hey, Kushin, how you doing there? Good to see you. Oh, I really wish I could improve opinions. My character has been a pretty good ruler. He's been reigning for a long time, but he's just not... His shyness has really been a hindrance. I think we would be way bigger and more successful. We'd have better relationships, too, if it wasn't for the fact that, uh, that our, our character is shy. I think we're going to try and take the province of Lori here. I don't think I have... Uh, have a claim against these guys. Well, I can claim the title as the head of the uh, of the house. But I gain stress because I'm generous. Ten more stress won't push me over to level two, though. I do lose 150 renown, but that's fine. I've got a thousand. So I get an unpressed claim on the principality of ha Hyastan. I'm going to go ahead and declare war on these folks. My claim is... Well, I don't want the whole thing. I'm claiming the whole thing? So, I just want Hyastan. I don't want the whole damn thing. Okay. Uh, well, let's do it anyway. All right, declare war. We'll see what comes of this. So we're going to raise all armies. Send forth all legions. That'll be about 1,600 soldiers. The enemy has 1,000. They also have an alliance with about another 400. So I don't even need my allies at this point. 
I think I will call some of my smaller allies. So my son. Uh, we'll have to unpause, I think. All right, so let's call... I cannot call vassals as allies in a war. Why? Oh, because they're already raised in my forces, I guess, maybe? Okay. Well, then let's do this. None of these guys particularly like me. But I'll call one of them to war. All right, so first things first, we'll advance this army south toward Lori, where we're at war, and then we'll advance south and, and knock out the enemy. All right, so our allies coming to the war, enemy allies joining the war against them, but that's okay. They're not very strong in the first place. Blessed are the meek. I was shocked when I caught David trying to steal from a traveling chest of, vi of a visiting mayor. Keeps the trait humble. So my my the next in line after Levan, who will probably he will probably become the Duke because I can't imagine I'm going to let the murderer out, right? Humble's a pretty good trait, and I don't want to gain more stress, so we'll go with that. Where are these guys going? I'm not sure where they're going. All right. We'll go take this castle. I really just want the province of Lori. What's my army composition look like? Um, mostly levies. We have about 400 archers. We've got 11 knights, and we've got 1,300 levies. Strategic impasse. I'm sitting around the map table with Baron Bergrat and Mayor Androk discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. They both don't really like me, so I'm going to go with the option that allows me to gain opinion from both of them. And then we'll go from there. So we'll take the uh, the fort first. Meanwhile, my allies can march south if they want to fight the enemy in battle. They're marching and then stopping and then marching and then stopping. Okay. This is a pretty well fortified base, by the way, in Lori. 300. The, the fort goes up to 300, so it's a level 4 fort. We're two months from, from taking the place. The enemy is going to move into our southern flank. TBU, the tiny. Thank you very much for the follow. They're going to threaten the baronies over here with about a thousand. Oh, actually, no, they're not. They're going to fall back now. I want Lori because it's part of my um, my du jour. If I get the other titles, I'll frankly probably just give them away to my allies. I don't want to ma manage the territory that far south. Um, okay, so we won that battle. I'd like to catch these guys and engage them in a, in a field battle. I'll let the my AI armies do whatever they want to do. Why do they, like, stop? We're going to be chasing them all across Georgia, aren't we? I don't think I'm going to be fast enough to catch him. Can we catch him? Slow down, my lads. Maybe they'll get stuck in the mountains. Obviously, the mountains are better terrain for them to defend in. Oh, we caught him. And then our allies arrived, so we just absolutely outnumber them massively. So we won that battle. We gain a martial trait. 
And now we can go advance into the enemy territory. One of our uh, enemy armies, one of his allies have shown up. It gives him about 300 more troops. Not really a real threat, though. So we're, we're way ahead in the, um, in the war score right now, 63%. That was a slaughter at this battle. He lost 800 soldiers. We lost 45. Meanwhile, my AI found the enemy army here. Defeated them. And another slaughter, heavily outnumbered again. We'll move down to these castles and see if we can't reduce them. I just want to get the war score to, to 100. Oh no, another mental break. Alright, so I've it's been five years and I'm still at level one stress level. I can do one of three things. I can be, be alone. You lose 49 stress. That's it? I don't gain any traits? I'm already reclusive, so that, that helps minimize that. Or I can do Confess My Sins publicly. Disturbing Confessions for three years, which has a negative five general opinion of me. Well, why wouldn't I just think about it? I'm already reclusive, so I'll, I'll do that. Actually, the territory, the terrain's down here that we have to go attack. My bad. Up to 74 war score. My kinsman Miriam died. She was a daughter of Prince Rupan. She was educating my, my child, wasn't she? How did she die? Did someone murder her? I'll have one of my courtiers educate my child there. Where are all these armies? All right, none of these guys are the folks who I'm fighting. So we took that territory. We'll move forward here and see if we can't take more of these towns and cities and castles. We gained 14 gold from occupying it. So we're gaining more gold, I think, in most of these raids than we're paying out in military expenses. So I think this is actually going to be a profitable war for us. Have I caught the serial killer in my court yet? Yes, Amson. It was my uh, my son and heir, Levan. He is in jail right now. So, Levan Bagratoni was murdered, and he murdered my fourth son. So he murdered the next son younger than him, in the most in the last murder before I caught him. Apparently, our prestige is negative eighty-four. My dear Felipe, I may not have loved you, yet I feel your passing. Oh, my wife died. She gave me eight children. Apparently we lose our, one of our vassals at her, at her death. Should we marry again? Marry, oh, I can't marry my Kurt I can marry a seven-year-old it's great um I mean I don't know I've got enough children I don't know if I need to marry again maybe if I badly need a need an ally at some point I don't know. I that's a good question if the if the reaver trait's helping me get more gold. Maybe. Oh, but I need a wife to help my dominions. Um Let's do this. So I can marry Eudokia, who I will lose prestige because she's unlanded, but I already have enough children. And if she does have any more children, there's a chance we'll get a, a congenial intelligent trait. So I think we're going to go this way. There's still a medium chance of more children, by the way. 
And then what we'll do is we'll go to court or council. Well, we have to wait for the marriage thing. Alright, so you accept my hand in marriage. I'm way negative in prestige, by the way. So that's not good. But she can manage our dominion. Give us plus 14 there. You can see that already helps our income by half a half a piece of gold. And we get rid of the dominion penalty. Meanwhile, I sacked another enemy capital or enemy building or whatever. There's a hostile army here of Baghdad. Oh, they're being raided by uh, by a Muslim group here. Um, serve the crown. I wouldn't mind fighting, fighting some of these guys and winning some cheap victories and getting a little bit of fame and prestige back. We badly need it at negative 200 prestige. So we'll go try and take the, the final city and the principality here. So we won that battle. Another slaughter. We're just winning these easily. Meanwhile, shooting, soothing the pain. While I was at the market with David, his attention was caught by a criminal chained in pillory. Keep the trait compassionate. Gain callous. I'll keep passionate or compassionate. I don't want to, again, I don't want to lose stress just to lose stress. Or gain stress just to gain stress. So we're besieging these guys here. Four months left. We'll get 17 loot by taking the castle. And I'll get some prestige for winning the war. Yeah. No, you're right, Stein. I will. Do I know how to increase the number of men-at-arms regiments you can have? I think it's based on the size of your country. So originally, when I was a, when I was a county, I was only allowed to raise two men-at-arms regiments. Now I have up to four, now that I'm a duke. So you, you get plus three for a prince, plus one for the fact that I built a mustering ground. Additionally, you can increase the size of your men-at-arms units to up to 500 men as well. So two regiments still gives you like a thousand professional soldiers. Are these more like hostile armies? Okay. Oh yeah, another enemy army showing up. I don't even think 104 soldiers is enough for them to take any of these castles back. So I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, Kushin, the regiments can be increased up to, I believe, 500. So we won the battle. We also gained some, we gained a prisoner. I wonder where Prince Rupon is. I'm kind of curious if we, if we can gain more prestige and more money by just taking more, more cities. This one has 21 loot. I, you know, I know we've already won the war. It's at 100 war score. But I'll take the gold. I'll get, I'm happy to just take more provinces. Twenty-one gold is nice. I mean, that's well more than the uh, the the sieging it for like four months costs us like two gold, so it's definitely a profitable venture. Yeah, right. Gold, gold, gold. All right. So we took that. How much is this worth? Another twenty-one gold here. Let's go for it. The Slaughter Tavern. Alright, so we're working on this this castle here. My allies calling me to war. Against who, sir? The County of Kran 
the county of Celestria. It's a thousand men. The war, the, my allies here. The enemies are here. He doesn't even really need me, so sure. Join Liberty War as a defender. I've joined the second war, my lads. Alright, let's take this castle. And then once we take the castle, we'll uh, maybe go help the enemy or our allies. We'll, we'll, we'll agree on a peace treaty first. There's a hundred bad guys marching toward me, and I don't care. There's also a peasant uprising, but they're on... They're not taking the city, by the looks of it. Oh, no. Prince Levan of Armenia is your new heir. Huh? You are now a mighty king. Rank gained. Oh, they surrendered? So I didn't get a choice and they surrendered. So the war's over. <laughs> so be it. Okay. I gained 195 fame, 195 prestige. All right, let's pause here. So I, I don't know that I got much of anything out of that. Prestige-wise, it looked like it all went to my ally, which is weird because... They didn't do all the fighting. Now we have a bunch of wars that were already in progress, I guess. I don't really want this territory. I'm the king of Armenia? That was not my goal. I want to be the king of Georgia. What the fuck? All right, and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump out here, and we'll wrap this episode up, another episode of our Crusader Kings 3 Let's Play series, playing as Georgia. Uh, we just accidentally made the kingdom of Armenia, so... I don't even know what to say about that. I guess we're an accidental king. Uh, we'll see how things play out in our next episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.